new date for late heavy bombardment may change life's timeline on Earth. Our planet may have been last plummeted by asteroid impacts longer ago than previously thought, explaining why life began to form almost 4 billion years ago. This is the latest theories now coming in by Corey Hayes published on astronomy. We know that our Earth has been impacted by various celestial bodies throughout time. We have scars on Earth showing this. Not only on Earth, but we have seen scars of this on the Moon. Just by looking at the Moon every night, we can see the scars on the Moon's first surface, on the uh, half of the Moon that we see. But we also have scars of impacts on Mars. Now, we have even lately had impacts one of them being a couple of ma months ago, an asteroid impacted south of the, the Aleutian Islands, the north of uh, the Pacific Ocean. Thank goodness it was not a populated area. It was not that much of a big celestial body. Nobody was uh, a victim of that, thank goodness. It was in the middle of the ocean. But there were, cha there were times when these impacts have hit Earth. Now, uh, when I was studying what happened to Australia, the, the impacts there were about at least 50 confirmed asteroid impacts. Sometimes they looked like volcano calderas, but uh, because of the minerals that have been uh, found there, they definitely confirm that it's asteroid impacts. We've also had comet impacts. I mean, if you look at the scars on the Earth, it looks like God's fingers have pushed the a crust of the Earth, if you look at, for example, between North America and South America, you have an indentation going from west to east, horizontally. You have the same kind of indentation going uh, between South America and the Antarctic, Cape of Good Hope in that area, and it's as if it, the landmass there, which was a peninsula, was cut by something that slid across and uh, again, from west to east, horizontally. And every time it stops, you have an arc of volcanic islands. The same thing happened uh, in the area of uh, Indonesia. Again, from west to east, stopping around Papua New Guinea, again with an arc of volcanic islands. I mean, something definitely terribly uh, severe happened to our planet long ago. With all these impacts and smashing into our Earth, now they say that this could have been happening a long, longer than uh, we thought. Asteroids, they say, may have stopped plummeting Earth some 600 million years earlier than scientists thought, giving life more time to evolve. This is according to NASA. The solar system once experienced a meteor shower of epic proportions, they say. Asteroids whizzed around the inner planets, crashing down in a rain of fire that left their, their surfaces scarred for billions of years. Astronomers typically call this a period of the late heavy bombardment. Exactly when that assault happened has been a matter of intense debate. The answer has big implications for the evolution of our solar system as a whole and even for the timeline of life on Earth. If you look at the uh, video before this one having to do with uh, the theory that Jupiter was hit by a massive protoplanet the size of Uranus long ago, and that uh, Jupiter's core is not uh, stable, that it's uh, leaking into uh, Jupiter's atmosphere. Jupiter, as we know, is a gas giant. And uh, the th they theorize that because the only way this could happen if, is if it was impacted by a big enough protoplanet to cause this, the leaking of the core, which was supposed to be supposed to be supposedly metallic hydrogen. Hydrogen, as we know, is usually gas, but how does it become metallic? I have no idea. But they st they claim that uh, Jupiter's core is metallic hydrogen, and that is leaking into the atmosphere, metallic hydrogen, because of the bombardments. You could imagine what was going on in our solar system. So uh, the answer, they say, big implications for evolution in our solar system as a whole when all this was going on. Everything was being slammed by celestial bodies coming in. 
Finding evidence of such a bombardment here on Earth is very difficult. Our planet regularly melts, recycling its crust, destroying any details of evidence that might give us concrete age for the period of heavy meteor impacts. And farther off on Mercury, Mars, and the rocky or icy moons of the outer solar system, scientists are left to count craters, an imprecise dating method, of course. The other option is to use an objective dating method, which is radiometric rock dating, on bodies that have kept cleaner records than Earth, for example, the moon and asteroids, or the meteorite pieces of them that fell to Earth and that are accessible. Now, when astronauts first brought back samples of moon rocks 50 years ago this summer, scientists found they all showed evidence of massive and intense impacts about 3.9 billion years ago. Later lunar missions returned more samples and all of them agreed some kind of a disaster occurred on the moon that indicated a massive slew of impacts less than 4 billion years ago. For decades scientists wanted to explain what might have caused a sudden influx of asteroids, comets, celestial bodies into the inner solar system where we are located, of course. But more recent evidence has hinted that Earth might have had liquid surface water before this period and it's hard to reconcile how our planet maintained a surface cool enough to host water while undergoing a massive cataclysm. And dates from meteorites never agreed with 3.9 billion years ago date from lunar rocks. But now astronomers led by Stephen Modzis from University of Colorado, Boulder, have shown that the bombardment may have happened much earlier, for example, 4.48 billion years ago. That would leave plenty of time for Earth to cool and life to emerge. They published their findings recently, just August 12th, uh, three day, four, a couple of five days ago in the Astrophysical Journal. And then they said there was a resetting of the clock. Most researchers think the late heavy bombardment was caused by the giant planets moving around, orbiting closer to and farther from the sun, and pushing lots of smaller solar system objects like asteroids along with them. But Mojzis points out that there is no timeline inherently attached to such a reshuffling. He suggests, so look at the asteroid belt. The asteroids predate the planets by definition, and we have 60,000 meteorites from the asteroids. His study, he says, is the first to consider the ages of all those meteorites on Earth. He says, and we find no uptick at 3.9 billion, end quote the time of the proposed late heavy bombardment, he says. But his team did see that most of the rocks had been reset, quote unquote, basically melted to such an extent that it restarts the radiometric clocks researchers use to figure out a rock's age. That melting is a sign of massive impacts, and they found the clock resets at 4.48 billion years ago only 80 million years after the start of the solar system. 80 million years after the start of the solar system. Wow. The best explanation is that's when giant planet migration occurred, Moji says. Instead of one big spike, this earlier period of asteroid bombardment would have been a slow tapering off from the early days when the solar system was hit more than rocks crashing into each other was a little bit more than rocks crashing into each other. In Moji's timeline, the giant planets still migrated, but much earlier than previous series suggested. This means there was no giant spike of meteors, but rather a flux of incoming asteroids that blended into the general chaos of the young solar system. The best and only real argument for a more recent spike of impactors comes from lunar samples which do show signs of some cataclysm occurring about 3.9 billion years ago. But as Mojzis explains, quote, if you look at the bombardment record from craters from Mercury, the Moon, Mars, satellites of the outer solar system, 
none of them showing up taken in bombardment. It's only the lunar samples, which were all collected and returned to Earth from a small patch of the moon, just some 12% of the lunar surface, and all collected near Mare Imbrium crater, end quote. The geographical clustering, more than anything else, hurts the reliability of the lunar samples. It's clear something catastrophic happened in the Mare Imbrium area, but it's not as obvious that it must have been a moon-wide, let alone solar system-wide event. If NASA or any of the other actors in the increasingly crowded race back to the moon succeeds in visiting the moon's more remote South Pole Aitken Basin and return samples from that oldest known crater, it would be, it would, quote, complete the puzzle, unquote, according to Mojis. In the meantime, though, he thinks his results lay to rest the idea of a late heavy bombardment. Instead, Mojis prefers a history where the influx of asteroids and comets slowly wound down from the solar system's wild earlier days to a gentle drift of space dust and the occasional stray impactor that still occurs today. Letting life flourish? Mojis' work does not only depend on measuring meteorite ages, because there's a lot of evidence for a migration of giant planets. Mojis' team modeled that it would, uh, what it would look like if the event happened early enough to explain the 4.48 billion years age date he saw in the meteorites. He says, we dynamically modeled what we'd analyzed geochemically. If this is correct, can this predict the reset ages we see on the Earth, the Moon, and Mars? And it does, at 4.48 billion years ago. And that in turn pushes back the age of the hospitable Earth. If space more or less ceased pelting our planet with asteroids by 4.48 billion years ago, that allows the Earth to cool and form water. The oldest rocks scientists have found on Earth come from zircons, and these indicate Earth had water some 4 billion years ago. The first hints of life appear at 3.8 billion to 3.9 billion years ago, an age hard to reconcile with the idea of a massive meteor bombardment happening at the same time. Earth would still have suffered the occasional asteroid blow. We see them even today, and we have strong evidence that one killed off the dinosaurs. But Mojis' work means that Earth would not have suffered the kinds of strikes that would boil away entire oceans and liquefy the whole surface more recently than 4.48 billion years ago. He says of his work, I think this resolves the conversation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.